All right, I just wanted to do a quick review, pun intended, on Under the Banner of Heaven. This is a new series that stars Andrew Garfield. It is on FX and Hulu. I watched the first two episodes of this last night. It was very difficult to get through. It is, it's atrocious. It is so hard to watch because the, the obvious intent here is to bash the church. And, and overall, it's to bash religion as a whole. The series is based off of a book by John Krakauer, which came out, I think, early 2000s. And uh, it's about the upbringing of a family, especially two brothers, who commit a double murder in American Fork in 1984. And they were brought up in the church. They basically, they're, they're excommunicated about a year or two before they, they commit this murder because they're preaching against the church, against the Latter-day Saints. They get involved with other Mormon fundamentalist sects, and um, they, they kind of are crazy. They're a little bit crazy, right? They, they, they start receiving their own revelations on, on uh, you know, adding new wives, a 14-year-old stepdaughter as a wife, and, a, uh, and then, of course, the actual murder itself, Ron Lafferty, says was a revelation from God that he needed to kill his his sister-in-law the 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 murder is of his a Lafferty's wife and 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 daughter baby daughter 15 month old daughter and the brother Ron Lafferty is the one who who says he receives this revelation to go and kill them I remember I remember maybe 12 years ago I had a client who was reading this book and this is somebody who knew me for a couple years and um you can see how powerful these kinds of things are because they 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 came to immediately I had a, a wealth management uh, firm for 14 years and that I ran and this client came in and says you know I'm reading this book under the banner of heaven and and I'm like oh okay and I knew what it was and and he starts asking just a couple of questions but then he even though he knows me there's that that element of suspicion right where where he says you know, Greg, you really should read this book as if I haven't been a Latter-day Saint my entire life. You know, all of a sudden, some great revelation is going to come out that shows some evils of the church to me and, and of history, of church history. It's bizarre. It, it's, it's, and so there is a concern that this type of thing, which is very much against the church, it bothers me so much because I see so many critics, both members of the church and those that are involved with the the Mormon history and 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 Mormon studies groups, so academics that that completely give this a pass. Of course, they're not invested sometimes in this, as members of the church are, and and so they think it's not a big deal. And 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 you know, of course, many of them are completely used to criticizing the church. So it's just right in line and, and on par with uh, their attitudes anyway. But uh, it definitely comes after the church. It is blatant, and, and it's ridiculous the way it works. Ron and Dan Lafferty, the two uh, uh, murderers here, they're both excommunicated in, in somewhere between 82 and 83. The murder happens in 1984. And... Uh, the book being already very anti-Mormon, it's brought up to a brand new level here with an ex-Mormon screenwriter who takes the book, interprets it even further with, a, with a, an, another layer of anti-Mormon propaganda and, and, quite frankly, garbage, adds a new fictional character. And it's Andrew Garfield's character. It's the lead character in the series. This is a a detective who is going to investigate the murders. And he is uh, a Latter-day Saint. He's a faithful Latter-day Saint with a, a wife and a couple of daughters. And they go to church. And all of a sudden, what's going to be brought up along with this, again, it's, it's all agenda-driven, is he's going to start hearing and in, in, interviewing some of these Lafferty boys, and he's going to start having a faith crisis. You know, like all of a sudden, these Lafferty boys bring up some, some things about the church, the church's past, and he starts all of a sudden thinking, you know, oh wow, what was this? What is this? And, and it, it's, I, I just, it's so ridiculous. 
and the way they portray it is is so bizarre so intentional i i it's, you know they're falling over themselves with with cliches of of uh outsider outsiders beliefs of of what mormons might believe and do and talk like it's like someone in the deep south maybe or i, I don't know in in uh in the outback of australia who's heard of mormons latter-day saints and there there's these ideas these memes that might come up in your mind about what a latter-day saint is with long beards and and you know they don't dance and you know all of these types of things it, it's right along those lines but it's dark in addition it, it is dark i want you to pull i want to show you just a little bit of the trailer here that is uh shown for under uh, under the banner of heaven which which came out yesterday the evidence points to things and to beliefs that i have only ever heard whisperings about i don't go digging in the past and neither should you okay same thing and the one who says i don't go digging in the past is someone who's like saying you know keep your head in the ground you know keep your head stuck in the sand so that so that you don't actually learn truth or it's basically the what what the way Krakauer would would approach any religion but he especially seems to have something out for the uh for the latter-day saints and 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 mormons as a whole so in addition to the book being all anti-mormon they now have the lead character going through a faith crisis where he's going to start to uh, doubt his faith because of these revelations. And they, what they do is they go back in time, these little flashes that they show, a dramatic scene of Joseph Smith or of Brigham Young, of the uh, Mountain Meadows Massacre, of anything that could possibly be seen as a black eye in the church. And the interpretation of it is always, oh, this is horrible. And then the whole thesis of the book, and I'm guessing the series is going to follow through on it, our, our theme of the book is that the, the, the faith, the Latter-day Saint faith, drove these two men to murder uh, this woman and her baby. It's disgusting, quite frankly. It's disgusting. But what do you expect out of Hollywood? I mean, I guess that they have now uh, uh, gotten sick of uh, bashing the Catholics. So now they're going to keep coming after the Mormons. Just recently, just last year, it was another one came out. It seems like a genre now. It's a new genre. It's, uh, what was it? Uh, Murder Among the Mormons, right? With the forgeries and the bombings in Salt Lake. Uh, Murder Among the Mormons. Well, now we have Under the Banner of Heaven, a new uh, genre of murder in Mormon land. Now, here's one of the problems. There, there's In the story, there's going to be a number of different Mormons, there at least one or two other Mormon sects apart from the Latter-day Saints, right? Fundamentalist groups that are a part of all of this. And so, and all I've seen so far is the first two episodes. But what they do is they bring these elements in to the story. You know, some men with long beards and, and they live up in the mountains and... and uh, there's just all these different elements of fundamentalism in that, that are brought into the story, but you don't know that as a viewer. And, and David Lance uh, uh, Black has said that he tried to make a very clear distinction between the Latter-day Saints and the fundamentalist sects. But he doesn't, at least not yet. He probably will later, I'm guessing. But so far in the story, you have all of these elements going on, and all you're thinking in your mind is that all of these individuals that are involved with this are part of some culty, uh, uh, um, dark religion, completely closed-minded and, and closed in. And, and of course, none of that is true, but they lead you to believe that, that this is a culty, uh, Latter-day Saint um, religion that, that is being shown in a very dark manner so that they keep the viewers involved. But Murder Among the Mormons did the exact same thing. They led you to believe all the way, almost going into the very end of the series, 
that everything involved here was with these active, nice, Latter-day Saint people, and that somehow there was this underground criminal, um, um, in fact, at the highest levels of the church, right, a criminal organization, some secret combination that was involved and behind all of these murders and what was going on so that you you kept you at the edge of your seat and, wow, are the Mormons really like this? Is this really what this is about? This, this series is doing the exact same thing, but with much more intent on the anti-Mormon aspect of the actual tenets of the faith and of the people and the culture. And you saw in that clip there also a, a little tiny scene of the temple uh, in there. And I'm not going to show any more. The trailer actually shows more. The trailer for this has has um, people dressed in their full temple garb, in their temple clothing and robes. And they're going to show, I haven't, they haven't, sh- I haven't seen this yet, but they're going to show in the series a, um, a, a portion of the temple ceremony broadcast on television within a stage temple. And I, I think it looks like it looks like it's it's staged from one of the rooms of the Salt Lake Temple. And you know, you, you, you just think to yourself, is there any other religion? Maybe maybe the Christian religion, any other Christian religion, they would do this. Any other Christian sect, they might do this. Can you imagine them going to the most sacred things of of Islam or of Judaism and and putting this out to the world? I I, I don't know. It's really. It shows you the irreverence that they have in Hollywood for for religion. This is from Ron Howard, by the way. He's one of the producers on this. It's it's not good, right? One last point on this, and that is about the language in here. The language is ludicrous. It is absolutely ludicrous. Um, there's a mention of Heavenly Father about every two minutes. And, and it's, it's like everybody talks in this religious speak, which, which is everything has to do with, well, did Heavenly Father do this? Did you hear this from Heavenly Father? Our Heavenly Father will bless you. All of these things. It's it just, it's so bizarre. It looks like it's coming from some, uh, you know, 15th century small town in, in um, I don't know, the, you know, or, 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 from, or from the Amish. Uh, you know, 100 or 200 years ago. I don't even think the Amish would speak this way today. Really bizarre. And I, I've seen some people online say, no, I think that might be the way that, that they spoke in 1984 in American Fork. No, they didn't. I was in Utah in 1984. I was going to BYU. I knew people from American Fork. <laughs> They're normal people. They speak normally. This is, this is it's such a meme it's so cheap. It's so cheap. I do not recommend that you watch it. I don't know that you can get through it. I don't know if I can watch any more of it. It is so hard to watch. It's so ridiculous. It's just this incessant push toward breaking down the history of the church and and the your faith and the culture and the people and it's it's very difficult to watch. If I can get through the rest of it, I will do another review um, when I get through it. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for listening.